Hmm. Here they come. Here they come. It's going to take a little while for everybody to get in. I so appreciate y'all uh, coming in early. Thank you so much. Um, the way that we've had to set up such a large meeting is that we've got everybody muted coming in, but feel free to unmute yourselves if you want to say hi, if you want to ask a question or anything like that. We've got Chris Waters coming in here in just a few moments, and he's going to be talking about, you know, it's some the thing I love about Chris, by the way, just kind of an aside, is that he is um, he does such a deep dive into whatever the subject matter is that he's studying, whether it's like creating a, you know, building a fish tank for him and his daughter. He's going to stay up all night and he's going to, you know, talk to the experts across the you know, uh, uh, overseas about the best way to, to keep XYZ fish alive. Like he's going to just nerd out on it. He wants to understand whatever that thing is from the inside and out. And the thing that he's been sort of killing himself over, um, you know, over the last two to three weeks is obviously we are in this kind of slow motion car crash that is the COVID-19 crisis. And I say slow motion because for a lot of us, you know, we looked out the window even a week ago, a few days ago, and we're like, wait, there's still deals happening. How, this, this can't be that bad. Life is going on. And then now we're starting to see, even in really hot markets, that this is affecting all of us in major ways. And you can kind of extrapolate uh, some of the very uh, challenging things that are that are to come. I see Teresa's on. Hey, Teresa, how's it going? We got Greg Phaedro. Hello, sir. How are you? Lots of familiar uh, faces and names. Um, Chris is going to talk to us about today because we're having to sort of break this off into manageable chunks, if you will. I don't know if you guys saw the webinar last week. If you did not, uh, let Adele know. Adele at wirsystems.com. In fact, I'll put her email in the chat box right now. Uh, and she'll send you a copy of the replay. What we talked about last week is we went over a massive amount of information around what is happening in the mortgage market in particular. Um, and what you saw is that you could go right after that webinar to Google News and look for that same information. It just was not out there, but we had experts who were actually kind of testifying about it on our webinar and then within 48, 72 hours, that information started to kind of trickle out as the media and the agent community at large caught on to this very complicated story about mortgage liquidity. Um, and that's something that's unfolding every day. I don't know if you guys are watching some of the markets, but you're watching some of your jumbo lenders pull out of the marketplace in total. Um, has anybody had that affect a deal? Feel free to unmute yourself or, or uh, just use the chat feature there. Well, we're watching, uh, very large price point deals that are falling apart now because the lending is not there. I mean, it's scary from one week to another. Chris today is going to take a, a different turn. And instead of just kind of an update about what's going on, he's going to talk to you guys about what you should be focusing on right now. The answer is probably pretty surprising. Um, it's not what you think it is. We've actually got Chris Waters coming on the call now. Chris, I'm going to unmute you here. How are you? Hey guys, how is everybody? Doing good. We've got everybody muted for now. You know, let's go ahead and just give a couple of minutes for everybody to get in because we had a giant response to this webinar and I'm watching people uh, jump in as we speak. Literally, we're at 11 o'clock central time and we've already got, what, 50 people, 60 people who've logged in so far and I think we have about 150 that we're expecting. Let's give them just a couple of minutes to get in there. Um, Chris, you know, it, 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 it's it's hard to kind of intro uh, this situation because it's so changing minute to minute, but you wanted to zoom out today from some of the, you know, bloody details of what's going on and kind of talk about, all right, the details aside, what can we do right now? What is the thing that we can focus on? I know that there's kind of a, a whole story to tell there, but tell me about how you came to decide that this one metric that we're going to reveal here in a little bit is kind of the thing. So the thing is, is like when, th when, when we're, when the market's in a state of chaos or you're in the midst of a, a freeze in the economy, you, you've got to really get back to the basics and it's, it's really thinking simplistically about what's the thing 
that you should be tracking to help, so that you know you're acting with intention and that without a shadow of a doubt, when the market unfreezes and the shelter and order uh, things are lifted, without a, a shadow of a doubt, what, what are, what's like the one key thing that you track and you're intentional about day in and day out that's gonna help you leapfrog and you know close a lot of deals once we get out, out of this storm? So for most of you on this call, you know, real estate lags the, the, the stock market. So you see the stock market go up and down. You know, a lot, if you've been watching um, CNBC or any of these news networks, you see the stock market's gone down 30, 40%. And I'm sure for everybody on this call, you're, you know, you're, you're, the houses in the market you serve, those homes have not got, gone down 30 to 40%. And I'm, and I'm also willing to bet for a lot of people on here, you probably have deals that are closing in the month of um, April and you, you see some money coming in the pipe, but you, you might, maybe you are, maybe you're not, maybe you're a little worried about like what the month of May is going to look like in the month of June and July. And so I, I can't speak for everybody on this call, but our, um, our group in, on Austin has about 150 listings across a very large geographic territory. And about three weeks ago, you know, we've been keeping tabs on that lockbox activity and it's down 75% across 150 listings. So Brad and I have um, 10 other partners that we work with across the United States. And so we also asked them to go check all their lockboxes. And in fact, almost everybody no matter where you are in the United States, lockbox activity is down 60, 70 plus percent. And so the earliest indicator of success for you as an agent, you can, is really rooted down to lockboxes because your most motivated buyers are the ones physically walking through homes. So whether you represent buyers or sellers, this is a good early indicator of what your pipeline is going to look like in 60 to 90 days. So again, right, like, immediate income for most most of us like you maybe you have like a gangbuster month in march maybe april is going to be really good but you might be concerned around what's going to happen in the month of may june and july and, and you should because um you know the, the market is it we're, it's at a freeze and so we're, we're going to have a slowdown all of us we're going to experience a slowdown in the number of deals we do this shift is happening a lot faster than most typical recessions. Like typically a recession happens over the course of six to 18 months. And this is happening really fast. So we'll likely, you know, depending on what market you serve, for example, uh, homes in the, in the lower price points, 200 to 400,000 across the US, they're still moving pretty quickly, especially if supply is really low. But, you know, we're just not getting as many offers, the days on market starting to tick up and, there is a there is a possibility that the coronavirus is the spear that may push the economy into recession maybe not we'll see there's a lot of money being injected in the u.s economy but during like this time of uncertainty it for us as real estate agents it's really about getting back to the basics and the fundamentals so for those of you guys that don't um know me or maybe this is your first time logging in i started a real estate team in uh in the middle of the great recession in 2010. And the thing that I um, quickly learned to master was inside sales, like book, like manage, like booking appointments, like call, calling expires, withdrawn, circle prospecting, et cetera. And I got to a point where in 2010, 2011, I was taking uh, 12 to 18 listings per month. And there's one key metric that I was like constantly paying attention to. And as our business grew, I write about this in the book, Brad and I wrote, um, as a business grew, I hired inside salespeople to help replace me, to get on the phone on my behalf, to set more appointments for me. And so as the years progressed, like I always tried to overcomplicate things as I was trying to manage inside salespeople, but there was always one key metric that I, I know that I needed to pay attention to. Like if I didn't pay attention to this one key metric, like nothing else mattered. So in real estate, especially as agents, we sometimes get bogged down and, you know, like making sure our website looks good and like, you know, a lot of reactive type activities. And so um, 
for those of you guys that have uh, been through a recession, do we have anybody that's been through a recession before? Chime in on the chat box. Has anybody been here through a recession? Yeah, I see some. I see a show of hands. Mark Deedle says yes. So some of the greatest organizations on planet Earth have exploded from a growth perspective through a recession. And we've actually got one of our partners in um, Indianapolis on, on this webinar right now, Mark Deedle. And Mark used to be in the grocery business. His family owned a bunch of grocery store chains. And Mark Deedle was telling me about how Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, said in 1986, in the middle of the savings and loan crash, his mantra was that he was not going to participate in this recession. He was not going to participate in this recession. That's what, that's what, that's what Sam Walton was telling his entire organization. So I strongly encourage every single person on this call not to participate in any kind of impending recession. And now is the time to be doubling down on the one key like metric um, that will undoubtedly help you have that, achieve that exponential growth curve. The same thing Walmart and a lot of other organizations achieved when the market shifted. 99% of real estate agents out there right now are watching that movie with that guy that's got the blonde hair and the tiger. I don't know what the hell it's called. I keep hearing about this movie. What's this movie called, Brad? It's Tiger King. Tiger King. All right. I haven't. I, has anybody watched Tiger King? Come on. Don't get sucked in. Don't get sucked in. Do we have any? Do we have any people on? Uh, any Tiger King fans? So the thing is, a lot. A lot of agents right now are are distracted. Like they don't know what to do, and even some people are just hanging out at home. But like right now is actually when you can build a substantial amount of mind share. In, in the minds of consumers right now. Cause like they're seeking information more than ever before. So the challenge though is you're not gonna get immediate results. Like the efforts you put forth right now are building brand equity in the minds of consumers. But there's this, what I call conversion cycle. And so the effort you apply right now to build brand awareness and brand equity in the, in the mind of a consumer you're not going to yield the, you're not going to reap the benefit of that within the next 30 days. But if you can double down now through the month of April, May, June, when, when the market's shifting and everybody's freaking out, like some real estate agents, they're not even thinking about their business. They're thinking about like going and find another job working somewhere like at Amazon, applying at Amazon. I, I don't know. Has everybody heard about how Amazon hiring, is hiring like a hundred thousand people? So, you know, when you get, you know, what does that, can anybody chime in on the chat box? What happens when your emotions goes up? What happens to your intelligence score or your IQ score? Yeah, right. So like when people are scared and fearful, they're not like, they're not thinking back to the fundamentals and the basics of like what it takes to be successful as an agent. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, load up my uh, screen here and get going. Brad, anything you want to add? Well, I guess no. load it up. You know, I think um, just really take what Chris is saying to heart. Like there is one thing that, that when we distill the results of this uh, or the, the subject matter that Chris is going to go over, there's one thing that you can take action on. It's going to be such a light bulb that will, you know, if you sort of quieten, quieten all the noise that's around us and all the anxiety that, that folks have, you've got to remember that you have to be intentional every day about doing this thing. Um, and not to give a spoiler, but it's easier than it's ever been before. Wouldn't you agree, Chris? Yes, it is. It is. It's super, it is easier. I can't um, walk right now, but let's, uh, we'll get there. Yeah. So let me, let me pull up my, uh, slide deck here. So I wanted to make something really, uh, short and simple for pe for you guys to execute on and, uh, you know, not over comp complicate things. Cause it's this, right now is about being really simplistic. Um, and getting back to the fundamentals. So let me share my screen here. Uh, all right, here we go. Okay, cool. Can everybody see my screen okay? 
So I'll, what I want to share with you guys is the one KPI to be tracking as an agent, and I'll share with you the three hacks you've got to be unlocking to, to have you know, exponential growth during a market freeze. So in summary, well, I'll tell you what that KPI is and then what those three hacks are, and I'll, I'll go through the details of each of the hacks. Um, okay, does anybody have any guess on what the KPI is? Like, what's the one KPI? This is the thing I, I personally tracked when I was you know, on the phone prospecting, the same thing I track when I'm holding inside salespeople accountable. This is, it's the first domino. So there's multiple like dominoes in the process, for example, of setting an appointment with the prospective client, but this is the very first domino. Let's look at the chat box. What are people saying? Conversations. Yeah, that's one of the early ones. Yeah, that's close. Amy, Todd, very close. So um, the very, the, the very, the very uh, first metric you want to be tracking is talk time. And I know this sounds super, super simple. And I wish I had like a more sexy answer for you guys. So I'll tell you what, um, what I used to do. So I used a, a, a planner to write down my talk time. And my talk time was not when I physically like sat down on the chair. Talk time is like the amount of minutes you're physically, like the phone is next to your ear and you're talking to someone or there's a dial tone. So does anybody, has anybody heard of Ring Central, the voice over IP phone system? So in Ring Central, like I would literally be on the phone for eight hours a day. And my talk time, like on a really good day was three and a half hours. So that's like literally the amount of time, like I was talking to somebody or the phone was ringing three and a half hours. Uh, that's like eight hours of sitting at a desk. So it's really easy for you guys to think you're doing a lot and you're, and you're applying the effort to help increase your talk time. But this is the first domino. So like, you know, somebody mentioned conversations. So it's like, first you track um, talk time, then you, then you look at your total number of conversations. And then from conversations, how many follow-up appointments did you set with people that say, for example, when we get out of this freeze, they're looking to potentially buy or sell. Like th those are called nurture leads. So how many nurtures did you create and how many um, appointments did you set? So something we're having a tremendous amount of success with right now is setting appointments via Zoom like pe telling people they can, from the comfort of their couch, they, we can do a Zoom meeting and walk through our buyer presentation, our listing presentation. And you know, we, we've, we're even sending agreements over to represent people via DocuSign. I'll talk more about those in a minute. We're doing, we have a, uh, uh, we took our buyer agency agreement and we added a paragraph called our virtual showing program. And we're having people initial it saying, we'll live stream a showing to you free of charge and we'll negotiate our commissions from the seller and we'll we'll go live stream three show, three properties and we're using facebook messenger to live stream the properties so facebook messenger is phone agnostic and so it's how we've been able to live stream the showing we sent out a text message to our entire database and brad you could probably share that text in the chat thread for everybody but the chat, the text message was really simple. It's like, hey, if you'd like to go two or three homes virtually, I'm gonna live stream three showings. Are you interested in looking at any of these, uh, at any homes from the comfort of your own couch? Brad's gonna put the exact chat in the box. So we tested this in Austin and 11 other markets. And our group in Austin had over a hundred showing requests for live stream showings, over hundred. We only have, we have like 20 some odd buyer's agents. So, you know, each one had roughly five showing requests from five independent buyers. So Brad's going to put that text in the box. So I want to talk about growth hack number one to increase your talk time. So first, um, there's two things. There's a couple different things you can, you can do. One is you can use a speed dialer to try to increase your talk time, the number of people you're actually talking to. I'm a big fan of Mojo. And, but now with one little asterisk though, I only like Mojo for calling through a large database. If you're gonna call through your sphere of influence, you should be doing one line dialing, like one number at a time. Not like a, not a uh, 
you know, not like this three line dialer or whatever. And so anyways, um, the voiceover IP phone system I really like is Ring Central. It's like 20 to 25 bucks. And it's, you know, like, yes, I have a cell phone and yes, I could track my minutes. That'd be a huge pain in the butt. With Ring Central, you call through your computer and you just hook the headset up to your head, you know, your, your ears, and um, it'll track your call time. And I'm like willing to bet every single person on this call, if you started tracking your call time, you would be like demoralized at like how little effort you apply towards meeting new clients. Cause it was like the biggest shocker to me when I actually started tracking my call time. And every time I would hire an inside salesperson and they weren't getting results, like it always came back to their talk time. Anybody in here an avid uh, gym person? Anybody an avid gym person? Anybody go to the gym a lot? So it's like, if you go to the gym, who's gonna get more results? The person that's doing like 100 reps or the person doing like 10 reps? right? So for us in real estate, our reps is essentially our talk time on the phone. It's the most simplistic, like very first indicator of future success. The, the closing, like the money in the bank is actually a lagging indicator. The leading indicator is how much time are you physically talking to people on the phone? There's also some CRM systems out there that have built-in dialers. If those are one-line dialers. I think those are great. Um, I want to, I want to go ahead and dive into some tech stuff that has been like drastically increasing our talk time. So one of the biggest, um, frustrations with like internet leads and stuff, like if you guys have internet leads in your database is, you know, you have to call like a hundred internet leads to close one deal. So we started using this AI powered SMS texting bot. And like, I kind of thought maybe it was like this drip email or like drip texting tool, you know, that would like drip out these text messages. And when I tested it out, I tried to act as a consumer and I started just like screwing around, like saying stupid stuff. And I was like shocked by its response. So what's, what's really cool is there's technology out there now where you can basically take your database and push it into this AI powered um, SMS texting bot and instead of you having to like call a thousand numbers like in your trash or your archive category, you dump all of your database into this AI powered um, texting tool. And it, it literally starts having a native conversation with people via SMS text. And all you have to do is like watch the screen. And when somebody responds favorably, that's when you pick up the phone and call them. So that's a really great way to get real efficient with your time. So like your sphere of influence, you leverage like literally one line dialing with like hot leads, like new leads that are coming in or expires with drawn, stuff like that. You know, I recommend doing the single line dialing. If you're gonna do like mass dialing, I recommend you, you use like a, a speed dialer, for example. So anyways, this is a really cool tech piece of technology. And like, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of this. I'm, I'm personally, I personally pay for it. I'm going to bring in about 10 minutes, I'm going to bring the guy on that is the founder of this technology. I'm not an investor. I, I pay for this. It's something I'm using personally. Our other teams across the US are using this. I'll have him talk about it more in a minute. The second thing that I want to share with you guys is like, I don't know about you guys, but like I have, I used to have leads in like all these different places. Like I used to have leads like in all of these different systems, you know, like I have leads like, you know, phone numbers in my address book. I had, you know, this one system that generated leads for me. I had this other system that generated leads and I was having to like log in and out of a lot of different systems. And it like really sucked up a lot of my time so that I wasn't dedicated on actually talking to people, which is like my highest value, my highest value use of time it was like having conversations with people as a market expert in the community. So the second thing I recommend is getting all of your leads into one place. There's a integration tool that I love. I'll, I'll show you guys in a minute. Um, and it's super cheap. It's like 30 bucks um, and it, it'll integrate your, your, um, all of your leads and push them into one system. So you're not having to log into multiple systems. So it makes it really easy to talk to people and make calls. The third thing is, and has anybody read the book Four Disciplines of Execution? Do you have anybody that's read that book? Does anybody, so for those of you guys that have read the book, Four Disciplines of Execution, um, you'll probably remember this. One of the disciplines of execution and four disciplines of execution is um, 
is having a compelling scoreboard. The second discipline of um, execution in the four disciplines of execution is um, a wildly important goal. So the wildly important goal I would give every single person on this call, which would be like, I mean, this is, it's up there is three and a half hours of, of like actual talk time. So not like sitting at your desk, but like actually three and a half hours of talk time. And I guarantee at three and a half hours of talk time, you'll be scheduling one to two Zooms, like for virtual buyer or listing presentation per day. And you'll be scheduling between three and four nurtures per day. Those are people to follow up with over the next 90 to 180 days. So have a compelling scoreboard. Your wildly important goal, in my opinion, should be three and a half hours of talk time. I'll get into the nuances of this, this technology. I, I don't wanna, um, I wanna wait until I bring uh, Nate on and he'll talk about the SMS texting tool. Um, real quickly, the tool we use for um, integrating our systems to get all of the leads into one place is called RealSync. Um, I mean, I'm gonna put this stuff in the chat box, okay? Uh, so realsync.com. That's the tool that gets all of our leads into one system. And I hope, Brad, can you type in the name for Structurally? So the tool we use, it's an AI powered SMS tool. Um, it's called Structurally. Brad, put that in the chat box for me. I, I don't wanna mess up the spelling. Um, and Structurally, there's no like monthly fee. So you don't like, you know, it doesn't cost hundreds of dollars. You get charged like a dollar for each lead that responds favorably. Like it's crazy cheap, real sync, crazy cheap, like 30 bucks to like, so you get all of your lead data into one system. It's like $30 for integration. And then also it does like automated tasks for you, like scheduling to do activities for calls, et cetera. Um, the third thing we use that's a compelling scoreboard is um, something called Sisu. And I'll put that spelling in there for you guys. Um, so these are the three tools we're actively using. Um, Structurally, uh, C2 and RealSync. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is like how to create, can everybody see my screen okay? I've got this chat box and it's like messing up my, uh, my visual. Okay, so the three thing I wanna, the, the third thing, I, the third thing I wanna talk about is like how to create more inbound phone calls, how to create more, this is probably, this is gonna be worth the entire one hour by the way, like what I'm about to share with you is gonna be worth the entire one hour of this call. Okay, so it's a lot, it takes a lot of effort to make outbound calls, no doubt about it. And you're like hearing the ringtone, if you guys have ever been on a speed dialer or prospected, it's like you spend a lot of time just waiting for people to answer. So one of the ways to in increase, your, um, increase your talk time is by generating more inbound leads. And so one thing I set up, and this is some, by the way, everything on here that I'm telling you is stuff we've been actively doing for the past 30 days since all this started. Like every single thing we've been actively doing. So this third thing is gonna be probably worth the entire 60 minutes of this. So um, I, I call it a mass syndication. So basically what I did was, is I created a slide deck and I talked about the state of the real estate market and I did it via Zoom and I recorded it. So everybody on here knows Zoom is free right now. You can go get Zoom for free. I think if you wanna record it, they might charge you like 15 bucks. I don't, Brad, I don't know if that's, is that right? If you wanna record it, is it 15 or, bucks? Record this or just record on your Zoom in general? Yeah, like if you wanna record on your own Zoom. I mean, get the $15 one because then it allows you to do a webinar that, or a meeting that's more than 45 minutes. I think you can record on the free one, but it's going to cut you off at 45. How many, how many people are interested in the slide deck I created that I shared with the local TV and radio stations? Is anybody interested in that? Like, I'm going to literally share with you what I shared with the radio and TV stations. Okay, cool. So stay, stay on the, um, stay on the, uh, stay on this uh, Zoom thing for another, like, I don't know. 15 minutes and I'm gonna try to get everybody's um, email or I'll try to put it in the chat box, the link, so you guys can see my slide deck. So just hang on like 15 minutes. So basically I created this slide deck and it was just me talking via Zoom and I recorded it and I went through the slide deck kind of like this. 
And I posted it to Facebook and then I started tagging the local news networks. So does everybody know how to go find the business page for like basically anything on Facebook? Does anybody know how to do that? Yeah, show of hands. Can I see a show of hands? How many people know how to go on Facebook and find like local news networks and radio stations? Do you guys want me to like show you how to do this really quickly? Does anybody need, does anybody need me to show you how to do this? All right, I'm gonna do this live just so people can see how easy this is. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go, we're gonna go on Facebook and I'm gonna show you how to do this really quickly. Oh, wrong site. Good old typos. All right, here we go. Okay, so one of the radio stations that I tagged in um, Austin, Texas is called KLBJ um, News Talk. This is it right here. All right, boom, here it is. Do you guys see this right here? Right here where my mouse is? That's me. I'm, at, I'm like, I, I literally sent my, I tagged the radio station with my slide deck and my presentation and they let me go to the radio station and do a talk about the state of the market. So like I was in a newsroom with one other guy. Let me just log this real quick. Show box. Let a few people. Okay, so do y'all see this? All right, so the way I did, so again, the way this all started was I went to the KLBJ News Talk uh, page and I um, pulled their uh, credentials. You guys see this right here where it says News Radio KLBJ? And then I went to my personal Facebook page. I actually did this for my business page, but I'm just, just hang on, why do I keep getting sitting here? My fat fingers. All right, so I imagine going to your business page and you just do this, KLBJ. There it is right there, you see that? I tagged them and then I, um, I added an image for one of my slide decks called the state of the, of the real estate market. For the sake of time, I'm not gonna go too much into the weeds of this right now, but you guys get the gist, like this is how you do this, right? Like you tag, you can start, you can do this for multiple things. You can do, um, so another one is uh, uh, in Austin, KVU News, uh, that's it right there. Another one is uh, KXAN. So anyways, you go to your business page, you tag the, the, all these local news networks, and you, um, you also can do this via live, Facebook Live, by the way, and tag people via Facebook Live. And this is how you get the attention of these news networks. So FYI, every single news station is, all they're talking about is the coronavirus. So how awesome would it be to talk about the state of the real estate market while we're in the coronavirus crisis. Like you're going to have people beating your door down. <laughs> um, okay, so anyways, that's, that's in a nutshell uh, how you do it. By the way, this is, my, this is the um, uh, slide deck I created. So like, you know, I'm not here just like spitting theoretical BS at you guys. Like this is stuff I, I'm actually doing. So I'll send you guys a copy of this, but this is like a, a uh, you know, the state of the market that I uh, created. And I'll email this um, to you guys. I'll need to get all your emails at the end of this. Um, hey, what? If they just want to email Adele right now, she can kind of organize it. Remember, this is the state of the market uh, slide deck. And then we're also going to have the slide deck available from today's presentation just to kind of make a distinction. Adele also has the recordings from the previous webinar. So she's uh, a trove of information for y'all. Okay, so I'll send that slide deck to you guys. I'll tell you what, I'll even do one better. I'll like send you the recording that I sent to thousands of people, including the news and the radio. So y'all can like actually see me giving the talk with the uh, slide deck. So I'll send that recording also. So anyways, create a state of the market slide deck. You can use my template. You can watch my video and get an idea how to do it. Post this to Facebook, tag all the local news networks, radio stations, I'll be shocked if you don't have somebody contact you to do a Zoom screen share where they'll interview you like live and ask questions and you'll be featured on the, on the news. 
Um, the other thing I'd recommend is tagging local influencers. And then also if you are, um, if you're currently, uh, you know, have a database and you're emailing people monthly, I would encourage you uploading your video, like the screen recording session from Zoom, upload it to YouTube and send it out to your email database via YouTube. Okay, the last thing on here, number seven is donate. So this is like, I'm, I'm doing this twofold. Like I'm not doing this to like get media attention, but it, it's kind of cool if it does happen. But I, I purchased, um, I purchased a bunch of masks. And so I'm, I'm like, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go, this is what I'm going to literally do this week. So you guys know where my brains, where I'm like heading is, um, I'm going to do this again this week. If y'all noticed from that, uh, state of the market, um, slide deck, it was from March 20th. So we got a bunch of press from that over the last two weeks, but I need to do something again to like stay top of mind. And I want to do something really cool for our community. So I unfortunately don't have like billions of dollars like Bill Gates to go buy like a seven, a 747 full of mass, but like I can buy a thousand and donate a thousand. So what I'm going to start doing this week and I'll share my results with you guys next week is I'm going to start tagging all of the news stations and the radio stations and all these people again. And I'm going to tell them, Hey, I'm, I've got a shipment of mass and I'm going to, donate them. All you have to do is like, you know, if you're immunocompromised and you want to pick them up, come to my office. So like, I have no idea what's going to come of that. It'd be cool if I got like some interviews or whatever, but it's also something I can do for the community. Um, is anybody, is anybody interested in implementing on this idea? Show of hands. Is this, in, is this enticing to anybody? Um, I don't know if this is, I don't know if this is helpful. Like I wasn't planning on doing this, but I'll like, I'll throw this out of left field. So y'all are going to get a kick out of this. Um, I, I, have a, I have a friend. How many people do we have on this slide deck on this webinar? 99 people. Can't believe I'm about to tell 99 people this. Um, so I have this, I have a, a friend, um, which Brad knows, and he, um, he's from, he, he lives in Hong Kong. He's been there his entire life. And his family has a factory where they produce linens. Like that's what his family's been doing for 40 years in Hong Kong. And his name's Alex, and uh, he, came, he came to the U.S. to go to college. And I'm, I met Alex about 10 years ago, and um, I got a text message from Alex, and he's like boots on the ground in Hong Kong right now. And he said, hey, Chris, all the factories in China back like two months ago, when coronavirus started slowing down in China, they started repurposing all their factories to produce these uh, masks, like the, the actual in 95 like lab certified masks so he sent me this text and he's like hey chris do you want any do you want any masks i'm like dude i i, I mean i i don't know i guess and so um what's kind of funny is I, I i've somehow got connected to the governor of texas and i'm like helping him procure nine million masks which is crazy for the whole state so if you guys want some masks to buy masks i've got a, a contact in um, hong kong Alex's uh, family has a network of manufacturing facilities. And so if you wanted to buy some masks to like donate to your community to use as, I don't know, like some kind of call to action to get some media, plus also like do some good for your community. I'll, I'll give you his, uh, I'll put his phone number. Uh, Alex is probably gonna kill me, but whatever. Um, I'll put his phone number in here. He speaks perfect English, by the way. He, he, got, he got his accounting degree in. Uh, here in college. Um, here's his number in Hong Kong. Two, three. I'll give you a U.S. cell phone too, by the way. Four, four, nine, one. I don't know how to do that. This is like a Hong Kong number. Um, I never call him from that number, by the way. The, the number I use is a U.S. based phone number. Uh, he has like one of those pay to go cell phones when he comes to the United States. And it's 818-915-3401. So anyways, Alex can get, Alex is like a legitimate source, like boots on the ground. Like if somebody at the hospital or some facility in your community needs masks and they need like millions of them, or, you know, maybe you only need, I don't know. It's like, even, you know, like, I don't know, there, there's a minimum order. Like I, I ordered a thousand masks for us to like donate to the community. Um, you know, but he can get access to literally 9 million. 
Like I'm connecting him with the governor of Texas to help him get 9 million masks for the whole state. So anyways, um, I wasn't planning on doing that, but anyways. So that's another cool thing we can do right now, right? Is like, there's a cool opportunity for us as agents to be uh, civic leaders in the community. And uh, this guy's name is Alex, by the way. Just tell him I told you to call. I don't, I don't know, you know, they always, they always, they always say like, when you, when you teach a class, only 90, or uh, excuse me, only like one out of 10 people actually implement. So like, you know, I know there's a hundred people on here, but I hope that's not true. Actually, I think it'd be awesome if every single person called in. Um, okay, so I, I also put the, uh, this is the link. I'm gonna put this in the chat box. So this is the link to the uh, slide deck presentation that I created. My, um, my, how do I get to the chat box? Uh, one second here. All right, cool. Okay, so I just put, I mean, can everybody access that? Just click on the link and make sure you can see it. Can everybody see that all right? I put it in the chat box. Okay, cool. All right, so that's the state of the market. I did it via Zoom. I tagged all the news networks, radio stations, et cetera. It got me some, like, I actually got to go to the radio station, do a Facebook Live. My Facebook Live, by the way, got over 20, uh, over 20,000 hits. So it's been generating a lot of inbound phone calls. There's more people than ever at, um, I have to request permission. All right, uh, let's see. I can't just copy this. Brad, I can't just like copy Tell this. Tell me what you're trying to do again. I'm just trying to share this slide deck with everybody. Um, okay, so it works for me. Has anybody else tried the link? Give me a thumbs up if you have a camera on and you have tried the link or a thumbs down if you did and it did not work. Thumbs down. Okay, so Chris, what you've done is you've shared it, but it's probably only shared to people with them Waters International. So I can go in and fix it for you here in just a little bit. Everybody save the link. I will fix it immediately uh, as soon as we get off of this webinar, okay? Okay, so uh, I want to revert back to one thing um, that we talked about earlier, which is about technology to help increase the number of calls you have. So I brought somebody on this webinar today, and it's, it's, his name is Nate. He's from Structurally. I'm like a paying customer and a raving fan of this, which is why I'm bringing him on. And we've been using Structurally to increase the number of calls we're actually having with clients. And so how many people have CRMs out there and like systems to manage all your leads? Show of hands. I can see a lot of hands. Yeah. Okay, cool. So what we did was is we leveraged um, Structurally. We started off lever leveraging Structurally to send all of our like archive trash type leads. And then like our results were so good, we started actually pushing all of our new leads there too. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring um, Nate on the call right now. Hey, Nate, welcome. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Good. Um, so Nate, I, I met you, so just so everybody knows, I met you at um, Inman. I think you were on Startup Alley. It was like two or three years ago? Yeah, yep, that was a while ago. And so, so two or three years ago, uh, Nate um, launched this company. It all started, um, this artificial intelligence all started as a classroom project in college, right? Pretty much, yeah. It it, it actually uh, probably full so uh, full circle here. Uh, we spent our senior year in college basically just calling realtors. So uh, the flip side, we, you know, we we basically just called them, said, "What do you hate doing?" It was always lead follow up, uh, and so we kind of started it right out of college. And so you're so tell us about um, how structurally helps increase you know, the amount of time agents spend physically talking to people on the phone. Yeah. So, you know, like you alluded to, you know, we, we follow up, nurture and engage uh, mostly internet leads. We also work with old leads to your existing database, but basically you can upload a lead or get leads like you regularly do from Zillow, realtor.com, your website, wherever. Um, we immediately reach out to them 24 seven, 365 and under two minutes we follow up with those unresponsive leads for over a year or about a year. And then as soon as they respond, we actually hold a two way conversation. So that's a lot different than, you know, just the typical drip campaigns that you might have now. We actually have that two way conversation immediately when they respond. That's Chris. Cool. And, remember and how, how, how skeptical we were because we had seen like sort of like 
I mean, basically crappy <laughs> versions, iterations where people had tried to do this and it just didn't work. And so when you and I first heard about it, we were kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's another one of those things, right? And then we totally uh, found out that we were putting our feet in our mouth because the product is actually uh, super effective. Um, hey, here's a better question. Nate, how long did it take you to sell me on using your stuff? <laughs> <laughs> that was mostly Andrew. Uh, who's my co-founder, but I know he, uh, he's been chasing you a while. <laughs> it was, I mean, rightfully it was probably so. about a year and a half. Yeah, rightfully so. I mean, most chatbots out there are rough, but we, we made sure that it was, you know, our motto is in, indistinguishable from human. And we do little things like put a purposeful typo in some of our messages. Talk about that because that is so crazy ninja. Like, can you, tell me can, what it'll and also, do. Can you, can you screen share, Nate, like how like amazing these conversations are? Yeah, I can see if I can pull one up quick uh, while I kind of explain the, uh, the typo. Uh, but basically it's, it's really simple. You know, most people have kind of sniffed out autoresponders. Um, and so if you do little things like just misspell the word the, which is with something that we do and then send a immediate message right after that corrects it, you know, asterisk T H E. Uh, we see a huge lift in engagement just because people are like, Oh wow, this is actually a, a real person. I need to respond to them. So I'll share with you guys while, I, um, while Nate's pulling that up, something I'll share with you guys is like, we will um, generate like a high volume number of leads leveraging Facebook. And I hate Facebook leads because they're really low quality. And it, it negatively impacts the amount of talk time of the agents on our team. So the agents on our team will like spend hours and hours calling Facebook leads and nobody answers, a lot of fake leads, et cetera. And so one thing you can do is because the leads are so cheap, instead of calling each lead, you can obviously you generate the lead, but then like you use structurally as a filter. So only the, the people that actually want to talk to you respond. By the way, do you guys want to know why Zillow leads are so good? Zillow leads are so good because people voluntarily reach out to you. Like people like voluntarily reach out to you. They have to click the button saying they want to speak to you on Zillow. That's why the Zillow leads are better than traditional Facebook and um, Google AdWord leads. So imagine like generating like a thousand like super cheap Facebook leads and then only talking to the people that respond favorably via structurally. It get, you get you really efficient with your time and your cost per lead is still a fraction of what it would cost if you went out and got these more expensive lead types. Okay, uh, Nate, you wanna um, show us what you got? Uh, and yeah. Brad, can you, can you do a, yep. a screen share? I got it. One client corporate, hello? Hello, hello. All right, can you guys see this? Yep. Cool. So this is kind of a typical conversation. Um, you know, you can think of this person page on the left side here uh, as registering on a website. We reach out to them. Uh, this is also one of my favorite messages. If you don't do this right now, um, this has one of our highest engagement rates of all of our drip messages is we call it the let me know if I can help message. We send it about 12 minutes after initial engagement. If the lead doesn't respond and that, that just gets a huge, engagement rate because again people are like whoa uh, I thought this was an autoresponder we see that we see that response quite a bit so the let me know if I can help message is huge um, so then as soon as they respond you know we have a conversation uh, this is what we call like a property inquiry lead so really tailored around this conversation is really tailored around a, a showing appointment and these scripts are slightly older pre uh, coronavirus, we made a bunch of tweaks last week to accommodate uh, the current situation with more uh, empathy and sh uh, showing appointments via Zoom and virtual appointments. So although you might see, you know, a question here about when would you like to see the property, that has since changed due to coronavirus. Uh, what are you guys saying now that kind of uh, acknowledges uh, what's going on? The gist yeah, of it there's... A whole bunch of things that we added throughout our drips and scripts but it's mostly like you know hey um, what's what are your goals once things calm down uh, things like that but also in terms of a showing appointment we always just say you know would there be a time 
that you can basically sit in front of your computer and let us walk you through a virtual showing. So we're still asking for like a dedicated time where they're available to go through a showing, you know, virtually. And Chris, one of the things that we were going to hit on is that people are available and they answer the phone more than they ever have. And it's not, I think it's not just because they are, you know, working from home or, or some of them are not working right now. I think it's also that they're kind of like looking for more information to help them, you know, get a foothold on, on a handle on the situation. And so they're more willing to talk to people on the phone. Um, I had some stats on that actually too. Tell me. Like it was that. basically, I was just looking it up this morning, uh, 800, according to Verizon, 800 million people are making phone calls daily, which is apparently two times more than Mother's Day. So oh. more people are calling wow. and answering the phone today than they're calling their mothers on Mother Day. Mother's which Day, is which probably is like the like biggest day of the, of the year for right. people making calls. Wow. Yep which is really interesting. And then week over week, I think this is about a week old data. It's probably going up. Um, phone, phone calls are up 39% and Wi-Fi dials are up 78%. And even, uh, it goes a little bit further. Text messages up uh, are up 41% uh, from what I saw. The only thing that's down uh, is emails. Emails are down 18%, which is probably no surprise. Interesting. So more and more, it's exactly how you started the call, Chris. More and more people want to talk to the phone, uh, talk on the phone. And it's like what you just said, Brad, I agree too. I, more people want information, but I think it's more so people want human contact, especially those, those of us, I, I don't have any kids, but those that are stuck at home with kids are, you know, teaching their kids, dealing with, you know, playtime. People want adult, real conversations about what's going on in today's world. And that's one thing that we've seen a lot more. Everyone kind of has an opinion on coronavirus. And, you know, I'm sure if you go talk to your, your grandma right now or whoever, they have their opinion on what's going to happen with coronavirus. So do your leads. Your leads want to talk to you about what they think is going to happen with coronavirus. And Chris, that dovetails into your, your whole point today, which is measure your talk time. These are the easiest conversations that you're ever going to have in your entire prospecting career if you're an agent. The easiest conversations with database, the easiest conversation with leads, like they want to talk to you whenever you call. I, anecdotally, have y'all noticed that robocalls are also down as well? I've heard several people around the office, I thought it was just me, but several people around the office have kind of validated that, that they're getting fewer spam risk calls than they were before. Um, you know I watched that movie. I, I, I watched that movie Slumdog Millionaire. Has anybody seen that movie Slumdog mm -hmm. Millionaire? Yep. And they're in a call center in India and they're sitting like three inches apart. Like they're rubbing shoulders on those. Mm -hmm. And these call centers are crazy packed. And so with coronavirus, these call centers are shut down. That's what it is. The That's call centers are shut is. down. The shelter wow. in place orders. In these countries where people are calling from, like the Philippines and India, like they're, you know, dictatorships and communist countries. The, the, the literally like the leaders of those countries are saying, if you leave your house, we will shoot and kill you. Like if, so something really fascinating, y'all can go Google right now. We have, we have seven virtual assistants right now that work for us in the Philippines. And we got an article from one of them and it's like a live video, a live video of the president of the Philippines saying, if you leave your house, we will shoot and kill you. Like it's freaking crazy. So all the call centers are shut down. Very few people are getting the robo dials. So anyways, we've covered a, we've covered a lot of stuff today. Um, one hey, quick will thing. You, will you uh, kill the screen share for me? Yeah. One, um, one quick thing I want to throw out to everybody is um, Brad and I are, are going to offer a weekly group coaching call for 97 bucks. I think it's 97 bucks. 99, close enough. $99. And 100% of the money we're going to uh, give to furloughed workers. So it's once a week um, for 100 bucks. And uh, if you're interested, um, just put in your email. And basically what I'm going to do every week is I'm going to share with you guys exactly what I'm doing right now in Austin every week. And I'll tell you what's working and what's not. So like next week, I'll have an update for you about the, um, 
the, the, the mass. Like they should be getting delivered here at my front door in the next couple of days. And I'll, I'll do a little thing about what's how the mass thing worked, like messaging the community aware. So anyways, hundred bucks, hundred percent gets, um, uh, the proceeds are going to uh, furloughed workers. And, um, and then if, if somebody is interested in some like one-on-one -on -one deal, uh, we talked about that cause we got some questions and, um, what are we, what's that? We're, we're letting you add that on for just dirt cheap. We, I don't say, we, we rarely do one-on-one -on -one coaching. In fact, we haven't done it in about a year and a half because of the time constraints. And when we did, it was literally $2,500 a month. Uh, but we're actually allowing folks who are in the uh, weekly group coaching to add that on for 300 a month, just while we're kind of in this period, because we know everybody needs a lot of help to sort of make sense of things and decide what your next move is. And, um, you know, we've got yeah. Charles. Charles is in the chat box. Charles from coaching says that he loves the coaching. Chris usually wears a backwards hat. Get used to it. <laughs> well, my look at my hair, man. I got an afro. Got you there. Growing. He's got you there. <laughs> I got a. I've got an afro growing. That's why I've been wearing a hat. I need. I'm gonna. I'm thinking about shaving my head. You might see my head shave next time. Uh, I assume that was a wig. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, yeah. So for those of you guys that want to do the one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching, um, again, 100% of proceeds go to furloughed workers and. Um, uh, the other thing we're doing for the guy, the people that are doing one-on-one -on -one calls with us is we're opening up our training. So we have um, our group in Austin does training um, every single day of the week. Typically it's in the office and we've moved all of it to zoom. So like we're doing buyer lead conversion, scripting, objection, handling, role-playing listing side, role-playing objection, handling, buyer consultation, buyer presentation, like we're all this stuff are, are basically our training playbook for our brokerage. We're, offering to everybody um and and you can uh join on as well in addition to the um the one-on-one -on -one coaching so, yeah so if you're building a little team and you want to help uh, you need you need to focus on on your uh, prospecting and whatnot you want to still continue to deliver some really good training to your agents let us help you out there uh and they can jump in and kind of learn from us we have a five sessions a week one of them for example, from our listing agent team lead there in Austin, she does what we call kitchen table conversions. So she teaches your folks how to get past the objections that appear in the kitchen table appointment. She's actually tailoring those classes to deal with what's going on right now because there's a whole new set of objections. Um, and then I lead a big hour and a half session where I walk your buyer agents through how to, uh, you know, take a, a, a one-time inquiry. How much is 123 Main Street on the phone or, you know, on the internet and turn that, convert that into a conversation with somebody who actually likes you and wants to meet you uh, to do a consultation or a virtual consultation right now. So yeah, we're going to do that for the next couple of months and just help everybody get through this. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't that's know. our little way to get back. Yeah. I don't know how long we'll do this, but it's just for like a, a short time to help people out. Um, uh, let's see what does, I'm going to open it up for Q and a for a minute. Does anybody have any questions about anything I covered? Roman had his hand up earlier. Roman, if you're still with us, feel free to jump in. Uh, but yeah, let us know. Raise your hand. There's a little hand raise feature, or you can just chat it in. Roman, are you there? So just uh, yeah, I'm I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, I pressed it by accident. Oh, that's okay. That's all right, man. Sorry. Uh, say it again, Chris. Yeah. So just a quick summary, guys. Like the one KPI to be tracking is your talk time, and the second most important thing is to make sure you're you've got a, what I call a compelling scoreboard. So if you use Ring Central, or you can like log into your cell phone and whoop, and actually track um, talk time, I think every single person, if you actually track talk time, would be like shocked at like how little time you actually spend talking to people. Um, and then I talked about some things to improve your talk time. So for example, um, RealSync, by the way, um, RealSync integrates structurally with your CRM. So if basically you want structurally set up so that it automatically starts chatting with your leads and then those like those chats, right? The like chat threads get pushed into the lead record of like Boomtown, Sierra, whatever CRM you're using. And it, and it creates like a to-do activity for a follow-up call and notifies you via text because somebody responded favorably. Um, we're currently doing that. We're using RealSync to integrate structurally with our uh, CRM system. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to load something in the chat box for you guys. Let me see if I can put, I'm going to load a document called the ultimate tech stack in the, um, 
in the doc in the uh, in the chat box. Hang on hey, while second. you're doing that, um, Thomas had a question about performance-based structurally pricing. Hey, Nate, I'm going to unmute you because you guys have some some pricing, I think, options there. Can you kind of clarify the, how the pricing works for structurally? Yeah, our pricing is usually based on um, the amount of new leads that you get in a month. Um, uh, I think with with like Waters um, franchise, we're we're doing a mix of both old and new leads for, for your different teams. And that is a different pricing model that um, you can basically just chat with us about because it gets really complicated. That's a really interesting place to start though, right? Because like, yeah. you know, our first test with you guys was where we took some of our franchise teams and we said, okay, let's, let's give, let's see what you can do with some of the uh, seasoned leads first. And we're going to call seasoned leads like year old leads, 18 month old leads. And I'm yeah. going to run down really quickly because I know we're short on time, what the results were. We sent 250 leads through structurally from our Amarillo, Texas team. And the leads on average were probably about 14 months old, a little under contacted, had been owned by some agents who hadn't contacted enough and sort of like sent them to archive prematurely, et cetera. And so these leads, uh, they go through the system and we got the report after seven days and the seven day report was out of 250 leads, 97 of them had responded. 29 of those responses were very positive. The rest were like neutral and negative. And keep in mind, that's usually not somebody telling you to buzz off. It's just, Hey, we already bought a house. We're not interested anymore. Right? The dashboard was so kind to us it didn't even show us the negatives right it showed us it emphasized the positives because why do i want to go see the negatives right and literally i had 29 new conversations from leads that i was calling dead leads 29 new people who were saying yeah we decided to wait until june yes we're still getting pre-qualified and so i got as the the uh, team lead a report at the end of the week my agents got a notification immediately that says, hey, Sally Smith is back in action. Go call Sally Smith right now. And Nate, you guys integrate really seamlessly seamlessly with like Sierra Interactive and now Boomtown, et cetera, so that even when you're in the CRM, you don't have to go to the Structural Lead dashboard. You actually get a notification inside your CRM that says, go look at Sally Smith's profile because she's talking again. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I don't understand how any of it works, but I'm so glad that you do, Nate. That's great. <laughs> Okay, Chris, you were going to look for the tech stack. If you don't have it, I'm sure that I do. No, I, I, I just did a screen share. So is it, we've been on for about an hour. I have a couple more things I could share with you guys. Like if y'all want to like, if y'all want me to log in to like the back end of like real sync and like how we integrated structurally with our um, CRM, I'm happy to do that. If y'all want me to share the uh, ultimate tech stack thing. I created this document like two years ago. <clears throat> um, but uh, yeah, this considers open Q and A, um, and I'm happy to like show you guys like screen share behind the scenes stuff I'm doing. Um, Nate, I really appreciate you coming on here and uh, talking, and um, you guys should definitely uh, reach out to uh, structurally and take advantage of it. It's it's really inexpensive to um, uh, to get implemented, and it's you know. It, everybody knows like you want to spend your time on the highest income producing activities and like having text conversations at the end of the day is not really the highest income producing activity. The highest income producing activity is actually talking to the person on the phone and setting the appointment. Um, what's uh, Nate, I'm going to put this in the chat box. What's a good um, contact? Uh, how should people reach out to you? Yeah, just, just Nate at structurally.com is fine. I can type it in there too. Okay, cool. Um, somebody was saying um, the pricing per lead pricing, it was costing me 299 a month. It all depends on how many leads you're pushing through the system. The right? type of leads as well is what Nate was referring to. Yeah, it's, it's all based on the amount of leads and if they're new or old. So I but think you, that you guys are primarily using us for those old leads, which is different pricing than those, the new, new leads. It's a nice gateway drug. It's a nice... <laughs> It's a nice proving ground because, you know, for those of us who are very nervous and maybe we don't have that many new leads coming in, you know, then we are, we can say, hey, take these and go work your miracle magic with these hundred that were here last year. And then now, mm -hmm. you know, it can work. 
Yeah, and both the, the new and old lead scripts are coronavirus friendly. So even if it's your old, your, your old lead, we're not just going to send a blind, dumb message, you know, hey, still looking for a home. It's, it's still relevant. You know, hey, I know times are crazy. Uh, if there's something that you want to look at, we can help. I, we can take a look at the pricing with kind of the model that we use um, so that you can, you know, get something that's a little more performance based there so that you can see how, what can happen with those old leads. Because I know in particular, you have a lot of old leads mm -hmm. that are yep. that we contacted. Mike's cool. Um, Mike's in Annapolis, Maryland. Is that right, Mike? Send him your referrals. Uh, we've actually got several folks up there. Keyset Collier's up there. A lot of East Coast folks. Um, okay, Chris, how do you want to end? Do you want to, or did you want to go and do the real sync thing? Because we're not yeah, sure. Yeah, right I mean, now. I think to you guys, like, are y'all interested in seeing how we set them up behind the scenes? Like, I Thomas Mark says, keep going. Katie says, keep going. Yeah. Camera says, keep going. Okay. We got some folks uh, who like the tech stuff, you know. All right, cool. So I'll do a little screen share just to like show you guys like behind the scenes. Um, okay, can everybody can everybody see um, can everybody see the screen? Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this is the Sisu dashboard. I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at my personal um, scoreboard for me personally. Um, I'm not actively producing as a real estate agent, which is why all of my numbers are like zero because I'm not actively working as an agent. But um, this is a tool we use to um, track, uh, to track like conversations. And so this is not done manually. Like people are not logging this manually. It's all powered by real sync and it's updated real time as people actually make phone calls. So I'm just gonna pick um, a random agent. So this is an agent on our team in Austin. Um, she's, she's brand new. She just joined our team like 90 days ago. Um, she's closed this year 1.32 million. She sold three homes under contract volume is 410. So today she's had 48 conversations so far today, like physical conversations. It's like meaning like she actually talked to people on the phone. She set um, one appointment and she got one buyer under contract. So this all happened today and this is all updated real time. Um, so this is, uh, just so y'all know, this is the tool we're using um, called Sisu. This is the website, by the way, if y'all wanna check that out. Um, this, is, this is something I created a couple years ago. It's called the ultimate tech stack. Um, I, the reason I created this is cause like technology, I, I didn't come from a technology background and um, you know, like, the thing that I realized though is like, you have all these lead sources at the top. These are all like systems you can go and get. And, and there's a lot more by the way, like this is just a small fraction of them. These are all systems that generate leads. And so the thing is, is like, it sucks logging into all these systems and like having to push them, you know, manually push all those leads into your CRM. So there's a lot of different CRMs out there. Um, we're like a huge fan of uh, Sierra Interactive. That's like our favorite right now. We're currently um, using Boomtown, but my favorite is um, Sierra. And so basically RealSync is kind of like the plumbing that gets all of your leads and what those leads are doing you know, on the third party sites. Like for example, with Structurally, like when, the, when they're responding via text message, it pushes all that into your CRM system real time. So it doesn't require a human to have to do it. Um, and then from uh, the CRM system, it pushes all the data into our transaction management system. And I don't have Sisu on here only because Sisu just launched like two years ago. Um, what else can I show you guys? Oh, I'll show you the back end of RealSync. Um, so this is um, RealSync, the website. And so basically they have built these bots that like help you automate, like getting stuff from one system to another. And it's, and it's pretty inexpensive. I mean, I, I think it's inexpensive because, you know, like your time is valuable, but it's 29 bucks to activate a sync bot between two systems. And then it'll do 500 tasks. Like that's a lot guys. Like if you had to do 500 tasks, like how long would it take you? So it'll do up to 500 tasks for $29. So 58 bucks and like you've automated a lot of this work and it's self-serve. It's really easy to set up. So um, again, I'm a paying user of all this stuff. Like I get a bill every month for this. Um, 
I pay for structurally. I, Nate will tell you I'm a paying customer. Um, uh, same with RealSync, Sisu. So basically like here's our connector between Boomtown and Sisu. And, it's, and, um, here, and then here's our connector to structurally. So Boomtown to structurally and then um, structurally to Boomtown. So it's a bi-directional integration. Don't pay attention to these because they're drafts. They're not, I need to delete those. Um, I wasn't planning on showing all this today. This is very impromptu. <laughs> so anyways, um, creating a sync is pretty easy. You just click on add a sync and then you select, you know, whatever system you wanna connect. And then you just type in your, um, you know, uh, your login, you just type in your, uh, your information here. It's pretty, the pull your token is very easy. It's in the back end of CSU. Um, same with Boomtown. Like with Boomtown, you just, you use your login details, like username, password, et cetera. So anyways, you hit connect, connect, and then next, and then you're done. It's like, it's literally four steps. Uh, you select the source of where the lead's coming from, the target, like where the lead's going, you connect it, and then you finish it. Like it's just, you hit next and finish. So it, like you don't have to be tech savvy to set it up. Um, same with uh, Sisu, setting up Sisu is, um, you don't have to be tech savvy to set up uh, Sisu. Um, we have multiple teams with our group um, in Austin. Uh, so this is a brand new agent that just joined our team like uh, a couple weeks ago. You know, talk about Sisu from a perspective, and I know we've got to go, we've got to jump into another thing, but, you know, talk about Sisu from a perspective of, um, it, it, we're sort of nerding out on the tech bit, but the real juice is in the behavioral changes that it inspires among your team and kind of among yourself if you're, you know, a small operation. Yeah, so it, it I mean, again, it comes back to the, the book, The Four Disciplines of Execution, what gets tracked gets measured. Like what you like, what you track, you can also hold accountable. So the key, the key thing is, like I said, talk time. And so anything you can set up that's automated, um, you know, like for example, structurally, CC, like anything you can do that's like automated and it's like set it and forget it, and then it enhances talk time. Yeah. Like CSU gets your team in this crazy competitive environment. Structurally helps you tee up a lot of people to actually talk to you. Um, real sync helps you. So you're not being like an administrator logging into multiple systems, like daily trying to like get all your leads. So it's all about like getting really efficient with your time and focusing on the highest income producing activity. Kind of cool how it brings out the competitiveness in people whom you didn't really expect to be super competitive. You know, you get a lot of high S personalities who, as soon as you like put them in second place on a electronic scoreboard somewhere, something flips and they decide that they'll do whatever it takes not to be number two. Yep, um, I don't know if you guys saw this earlier. Uh, so we've been live streaming showings, um, using Facebook Messenger, um, been using Zoom for listing presentations. Um, our, this is our, this, so this, by the way, this is a slide deck our team is using. So if you guys had like plugged into our training last week, um, the uh, virtual listing protocol and you know how we go about setting appointments, uh, and screening questions to prospective buyers. This is how we put the seller at ease about the type of people coming to their house. Uh, um, you know, just, yeah, this is, this is like an internal training thing that we broadcasted to everybody last week. Um, this just talks about our uh, marketing implementation. This is the text message that we sent out that created over a hundred requests. Um, Hello, I wanted to check in and see if you'd like me to visit a few homes for you and live stream the video so you can preview some listings without having to leave the comfort of your home. So that's um, what we sent out via text and it created over 100 uh, showing requests. Um, also, let's see, what else can I show? Yeah. Uh, mm, yeah, so anyways um yeah it seems like i'm really well on recruiting by the way for those of you who are team builders i know we have like we've got to go and there's so much to cover here but you know to chris's point there's so much opportunity right now if you'll just take the action and if you'll just put your feet up on the desk you know uh, grab a soda grab a beer and just call talk people want to talk to you right now they want to hear from you it's amazing 
Cool. Chris, we probably need to end it there. Yeah. Thanks guys. Um, yeah, I realized it's already 12, 10. So I hope everybody's learned a lot. Um, again, if, if you guys sign up for the weekly coaching, it's, it's a hundred bucks. We're donating or we're, you know, we're going to give all the money to furloughed workers. Um, hundred percent of proceeds go to furloughed workers. And then there's a one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's 300 bucks. And if you do the one-on-one -on -one coaching for 300, it also includes access to our entire team's training, which is live. Um, and so that's like basically all week long, like it's multiple training sessions, um, buyer agent focus, listing agent focus, objection handling, lead generation. Uh, so pretty robust. Um, but um, was this helpful for everybody? Ch chime in on the chat box. Did everybody learn a lot? I want to do some of the, want us to do this again, bring you some more like updates and practical tactical stuff in the next, you know, every week, every couple of weeks. Keyset just brought up something in the chat box, uh, chat box. And that is that Redfin just laid off 41% of their agents while we were sitting here talking. The email notice came through. Who did? Redfin. Oh my God. Just got 41% of their agents. Whoa. And 7% of their staff is what Inman says, literally while we're on the webinar here. Oh my so God. So remember guys, like this is great information. It's good to know what's, what's going on out there, but keep your blinders on. Worry about you. Worry about number one. The thing that's going to make you money and make you feel more in control of this situation is doing what Chris told you. And that is call your people. They want to hear from you. Easiest phone calls you've ever made. Anybody cop to the fact of maybe we've had some call reluctance in the past. Every now and then I'll push prospecting to the bottom of the pile because it's not, not the most faint, not the most fun thing to do right now. It's the most fun thing to do easiest calls you will ever make even if you're not particularly gifted at it you will be when this is over because you'll get so much easy practice preacher bradley pounds amen y'all came on a good sunday <laughs> didn't you <laughs> all right the sermon's good today okay let's get y'all out of here um, all right hope you yep. guys enjoyed this has been great adele is your person for follow-up she'll reach out to y'all and see what else you need and we've got her all the stuff so all the goodies that she can give to you see y'all later take care bye bye guys bye friends